Hello, welcome to another edition of uh, Tech Bytes. My name is Sri Raghavan, and today we're going to be talking about a uh, data prep function sessionization, which is in the Teradata Advantage. And in today's Tech Bytes session, what we will be doing is talk to you a little bit about what sessionization is, what the sample use cases are, uh, provide you a few examples, and actually show you some data and uh, some code as well that uh, can be used in uh, SQL to be able to do sessionization. Let's start off by first defining what sessionization is. Sessionization is the ability for us to be able to take a bunch of events over time. Um, it's essentially a time series function. And what we're doing is we're taking each of those events and we're stitching them together and we're giving each event in that sequence a particular session number. Okay, how does this work? Well, typically when sessionization is done, someone identifies a session window. They say that any activity which happens within that session window has to be associated with a particular session number. Okay, well, you ask, how do you determine what that session uh, time is. In the case of, uh, let's say, somebody who's doing online shopping, typically you don't want every activity which, uh, let's say, you click on the homepage at uh, 7, 10 p.m. and then you click on a product page at 7, 11 p.m. Well, theoretically, these are two separate events, right? But the fact is, they happen within such close proximity of each other that you don't really want to have two events happening within just under one minute or so. So you basically say, look, every time a set of activities happens within 30 minutes, they're part of one session. Now, why would you do that? Well, the reason why you do that is because you want to actually have meaningful sets of activities spread across time that are reasonably bifurcated by time. So anything which happens between 7 and 7.30 is considered to be a set of activities within one session. And the reason why people do it this way is because different verticals have got different time attention span. Typically when somebody is shopping on the website, although there are odd cases where people shop for four hours at a time, most of the time we all finish our shopping within you know, 20 or 30 minutes. And companies like to understand what these activities look like when they're spread over time. So the first 30 minutes when you finish a set of activities is considered to be one session. After that is another session and so on and so forth. Now that happens in retail with a 30 minute time span. In the case of manufacturing, let's say for instance, you're looking at um, sensor data. Manufacturing is a bit of an elongated process. There are things that happen within 30 minutes, but there are also things that happen within a month. So the manufacturing company might say, look, I'm interested in all the set of activities within a, let's say, a 24-hour time period. And I want to understand sessions, any of these sensor activities that happens within 24 hours is considered to be one session. And anything beyond that is a second session and so on and so forth. The ultimate goal is for sessionization to just be a data prep function. In and of itself, it is not going to help you in analytics. It is a very important and crucial component of all the analytics that happens downstream. Simply put, all that sessionization does for you is to take all your activities, put them in a logical sequence based on how you separate time, and then use the sequence of activities, the numbers rather, in that sequence, as inputs into other analytic functions that we will talk about later, such as NPATH. What are some of the sample use cases you're looking at? Well, you look at things like um, fraud detection. What are the sequence of activities that preceded some sort of fraud activities, number one? What happened before customers churned is another use case to which sessionization is applied. When networks collapse, be it for nefarious reasons or for technical reasons, you want to understand what happened before? What are the sequence of activities that happened before? To determine the sequence, you need something like sessionization. So here's an example. As you can see here, someone starts off with a certain time at which they click. And if these sets of activities, that is home, check out and check out again, back to the home, and these, that happens within 30 minutes, that's one session. That's why it's session zero, the first session. Then there's another set of activities, home, 
home again and home again, meaning that somebody stayed on that page for 30 minutes. Therefore, that was given another session ID of one. So again, you just simply put a certain time window, compute whether those activities are within that time window, and assign a number to it if they're within the time window. That's what it does. That's what sessionization is all about. Now, let us look at some code and let us look at the results if we run that code. Here I have a retail data set. In that retail data set, I have people undertaking activities, uh, meaning that they come to the store, they call the call center, they go to the website to chat, then they uh, purchase a product, sometimes they return a product, a whole bunch of things, right? I want to understand for customers what are their activities as allocated to specific sessions. So let us take this example here. I'm interested in people who have churned, meaning these are people who have returned a product. Now, the reason why in this particular instance I'm focusing on people who returned their product is because I want to understand, hey, if you're returning a product, that's bad for me as a business. And I want to know why you returned the product, meaning what are the different kinds of things you did before you returned the product. So therefore, I can try to proactively help you and help myself in the process and make sure you're happy by not returning the product and make myself happy because... I don't have to deal with returns, right? So the first thing you do is sessionization. So as you can tell, um, I have the data set and I've said, look, give me the data set only with, for people who have churn. And then I said, I want you to sessionize. That's the function in Teradata Advantage that you call it. Select star from sessionize. It's that easy, by the way. As you can tell, I'm not showing you any code as to how to actually execute the sessionize code. I simply say select star from sessionize and what Terra Advantage does is it extracts the code, the underlying code for sessionize, which you don't see at all. And it applies that code on this data set, which I've created. Um, this is a retail data set that I have. And in that data set, I'm picking only churners and I'm saying, give me all those activities with those people who've churned, but make sure that it is all sessionized with a 24 hour time frame, meaning that here is a time frame 86,400, which is 24 hours expressed in seconds. And I'm telling you that all those activities which are within the 24 hour period need to be assigned to one session and so on. So here I have, it's all arranged by, by timestamp, is this customer ID 64497. That customer had an activity on March 18th at 10.25, which is a complaint call. At 10.25, they did a return policy inquiry. And at 10.29, uh, they uh, did a product browsing. And then on March 19th, which is full 24 hours away, they did a web chat. And then finally, on the 21st, they returned the product. So look, the first three events, which is complaint call, return policy inquiry, and product browsing, uh, happen uh, within the 24-hour period and therefore are given a session ID of zero. A web chat happens exclusively within the next 24-hour period, which is on March 19th, and that's given a session ID of one. And finally, product return happens on March 21st for a session ID of two. And all of this is on customers of churn. You can do it on any segment of customers, churners, non-churners, by geography, what have you. But again, the point here is that I've shown this result for one customer. I have shown you the logic to sessionize, which is within the 24-hour period expressed in Vantage code in the form of seconds. And I've said, take all the events, do a timestamp uh, order, and cut off the timestamp in 24 hour segments, and then assign session IDs for all those events that happen within that particular 24 hours. And that's what you see happening here. And that is sessionization. And as you will see in the next Tech Bytes and NPath, we will use this information, this table that you see here, which is retail daily sessions churn as an input, meaning that this table here will be used as an input to figure out and pat which I will explain in the next tech bytes. So this concludes 
the sessionization tech bytes. Thank you.